please welcome the gift of God in the Fountain of Life Church, Pastor Ibuku Awoshiga. That is not for God. Let everybody sleeping in heaven be awake and know that the fountain of life church is alive. Don't go quiet on me. I want the heavens to rise and know that the fountain of life church is away. Name a Santa Maria. Name a Santa Maria. Name a Santa Maria. Hallelujah! 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 Yeah, we are to worship. To bow down, here we are to say that your want you to take it for granted. That's August of 2023 we were in a different place. That even though we had the word explosion last year considering what we've been through many will not be sure that we will be here today. But we are but we are but we are for this house is built upon the rock the rock that can never be moved and upon that rock the Lord has built his church Thank you 
for loving us specially. We must never forget that we're precious in the hands of the Lord. And therefore, he has paid extra attention to us. He has kept us. He has watched us. Many cannot understand, but the grace of the Lord has been sufficient for this house. Thank you, Father. Our Lord and I, God, I stand in your presence today on assignment. I ask you, Lord, that that which you have proposed, you will fulfill. That you will touch every life here and anywhere around the world where they're linked up with us, Father. They will hear your voice. They will receive from you. They will receive your instruction. They will be delivered by your power. That your presence shall manifest wherever they are. At the end of the day, Lord, it shall be said that indeed we have been to the house of the Lord. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we are praying. Take the stage, Lord. Have your way. I'm just a vessel. Nothing more And when, when you're done Please take the glory I'm satisfied Just to see you glorified All the glory to you, Father In Jesus' name we have prayed Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you very much for coming to church twice in one day. That's because you love the Lord. Thank you very much, our darling Pastor Jim and our associate senior pastor, Pastor Tulu Odukoya Ijogu. We thank both of you for the, your service and for your labor. May the Lord reward you. And thank you for the opportunity to speak to the Lord's people. Amen. How many people were blessed in the service in the morning? Let's put our hands together. Amazing job. All glory to the Father. We give him praise. Well, I'm just going to continue in the theme of the conference, which is signs and wonders. And... My specific topic is on trials and trials. How your trials that can be signs of whatever in your life become your trials that make you the wonder to men. When your trials become the same tools that the Lord will use to put you on top of the mountain because he is God. All by himself and no one can stop him. I don't want us to be confused about what signs are or what wonders are. So I've just spent a few minutes to lay the foundation. I know I have some slides, but if they can get it up, fine. If not, I'm good to go. Okay. So what is a sign? An indication, an assurance, or evidence of the occurrences of an event or action. Past present or future. Many things happen that can be interpreted as a sign by the people of the world or by the church. It depends on what your context is and how you're looking at something before you decide this is a sign. If we take from the scriptures, we can think about the signs of God's marvelous works. If you read Psalm 19, 1 to 4, we have quite a bit of scripture references. I'll read some, I'll give you some, and you go and do the homework. Hopefully, you'll invest the time because it will be important. The heavens declare the glory of God, Psalm 19, 1 to 5. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. The, the sound is heard from them, yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It's like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. The Bible is filled with many moments that reveal the signs of who God is. 
as, is attest, as it is attested to by various authors in different moments based on their experiences. Or a sign can be an event, as I said earlier. So let's look at a sign through God's servant. 1 Kings 17.1 And in this place, Elijah declared, I serve the Lord, the God of Israel. Elijah said to Ahab, As surely as the Lord lives, no rain or dew will fall during the next few years unless I command it. <laughs> A child of God with audacity. <laughs> who knows who he is? Who understands that I can change the nature of the world by my command? Why? Because I know who my God is. The Bible says in Daniel 11, 32, they that know their God, they shall be strong and they will do exploits. Obviously, Elijah was a man who knew his God. And because of that, he could make a declaration that revealed a sign of who God is. Or we look at wonder. A wonder can be used to describe something that is strange, surprising, amazing, astonishing, outstanding, unimagined, never seen before, unexpected. Find any word that makes you a wonder, because I'm a wonder to the world. I'm a daily wonder. Just when the enemy thinks I'm done, she's done, we buried her. Hey, do you know the story of that donkey that they threw into the pit? into the well and thought this donkey is dead so what should we do let's bury the donkey to bury the donkey what did they have to do Pour sand. every time they poured the sand the donkey turned it into his weapon every time every time until finally he was at level because to fill the hole completely you have to fill it to the top but every time they filled, the donkey rose up, and he rose up, and he rose up. And they're like, ah, ah. The Bible says, you as what? As a wonder to many. We're a sign. We're something amazing. We're something unusual. We're something unexpected. We have many moments, unexpected moments in our lives. Even to us. She's barren. She can never have children. You see, medically they have said it. And then all of a sudden, she's pregnant with triplets. Ah, uh he -huh. was her. How? From where? Where did that start? How did that happen? Eh, that's what makes you the wonder. Why? Because they will tell the story and tell it and retell it. Those that tell it for good, those that tell it for bad, at the end of the day, the story will be told. And every time the story is told, who is glorified? Psalm 77, 14 says, You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might amongst the people. How does God make, make know, known his might amongst the people? It's through you. It's through me. The mightiness of God is revealed in the moments that you allow him to manifest himself in your life. Because we can go through wonder, signs and wonder as a year. And finish and we might not be able to count as many wonders as we should why because it's just a word it becomes alive and the power within it is revealed as you walk in it as you allow the Word of God to walk through you to reveal the manifold character of God in different ways see the same power same God. But he will reveal a different form of his wonder in your life, in my life, in her life, in his life, depending on where you are, what your needs are, what your challenges are, your walk with him, your understanding of him, your audacity and courage to challenge the Lord concerning the same word. First Kings 17 2 says, God commanded birds to feed his servant during famine. Then the Lord spoke to Elijah, leave this place and go east and hide near Kerit Stavin, ravine east of Jordan River. You may drink from the stream. I have commanded ravens to bring you food there. How many people have been fed by birds before? Eh. 
who cares if it has never happened before? The God of wonder does what? He does whatever he likes. He creates what needs to be created. He does the never seen, never happened, never considered, never experienced, never created. He is the creator of all things. The Bible says he rules in the affairs of men. All power in heaven and on earth, they belong to him. So in which category does your situation fall into? Perchance you have concluded your situation is impossible. Perchance you have concluded there's no way out for you. Perchance you have concluded your family history. This is the details of it as you have been told. Who has respect for your family history? Have you not learned about your divine history? Do you not know who the family, which family you belong to? Do you not know the history of the family that you belong to? Do you know the patriarch of your family? Because this is the one that can create what doesn't exist before. That patriarch of your family is the one that there's famine all over. There's no food anywhere. Nobody can think of what a solution can be. Yet, the unthinkable never seen, never heard was his solution. Why? Because in his bag of surprises, the miracles and the solutions exist in any format. Seen or never seen. Created or never created. Why? Because he can create it as he needs it. There is no limitation in who your God is. You know, so in a nutshell, signs and wonders are miracles and the demonstration of God's power made manifest through the Holy Spirit. But I want to read one part. Because you see, sometimes, and it seems like me going forward to come back, but it's okay. You will understand it later. Sometimes, and this is Daniel 4. I want to read verses 1 to 3. When the unbelieving man when a heathen decides that, you know what? Based on the wonders of this God that I have seen, I cannot make any other declaration but this. So, this is King Nebuchadnezzar. And he said, to the nations, he was writing a record for all times. He said, to the nations and peoples of every language who live in all the earth, may you prosper greatly. First bless them. They now declared the truth he has found out. So that you who belong to Jesus, I belong to Jesus. What is that thing? I can't sing. You guys can fill in the gap. It is my pleasure, this is now verse 2, to tell you about the miraculous signs and wonders that the Most High God has performed for me. This is Nebuchadnezzar. How great are his signs, how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an eternal kingdom. His dominion endures from generation to generation. But if you go and read from chapter 1 of Daniel to this point, you will understand how Nebuchadnezzar got to that conclusion. Now, I have taken you forward to take you back because then we will go and walk the journey of what Nebuchadnezzar saw that made him make that declaration because he is God. Jehovah is God. So Daniel is our case study. I would take some readings from Daniel's and some declaration. Now, if you read the book of Daniel from chapter 1, Verses 11 to 20. And I'll encourage you, make Daniel a book of study. Just go and explore it. And you would be excited as you read through and you discover just this great God that is yours. And how he works with men, those who choose to work with him. And you will discover that you are a daily sign and a daily wonder. But it's all about the choices that you make. Our lives are ruled by the choices we make every day. The total sum of our life is based on the choices we make. Every choice you make has consequences. Every choice you make will produce for you. Every choice we make will produce a result. And the summation of the result of the choices we make every day is what becomes the records of our life. What you would find out is a man who ch made choices. And the choices he made at every stage define the greatness that is called Daniel. 
and he became a real example of signs and wonders on a day-to-day -day basis. To be for signs and wonders, you must be willing to separate yourself. So if you read 11 to 20, you would read from verse 1 to that point. You will understand what so Daniel said to the steward, whom the chief of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Please test your servants for 10 days and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our parents be examined before you. And the appearance of the young men who eat the portion of the king's meal. You have to be faster than this. King's del delicacies, as you see fit, so deal with your servant. Now, just wait. So the, you, the man consented with them in this matter and tested them for 10 days. Let's give you a summary. So they were taken as slaves from Judah into Babylon. But they were of royal blood. They could see the hand of God on their lives. Everyone that knows you and knows you are a child of God can see the hand of God on your life. But you know, seeing it is not enough. You have to prove it. They could see the hand of God in the life of Daniel and many others. And so they separated them from the crowd of the slaves they brought from Babylon. But because they were the privileged slaves, many of us are privileged slaves. When you live in communities, in places where the things that are not of God are the practices, but you can be privileged in it, then you've become a privileged slave of the society that you live in. <laughs> they were the privileged slaves. But Daniel and his friends had enough wisdom to know, though we have these privileges, these are privileges of corruption. Why are they privileges of corruption? Because by their law and how they were raised, eating what they were offered will corrupt them. How many ways are we corrupted spiritually every day? By our choices, by the things we do, by our association, by the things we are quiet about or the things we concede to by our action or inaction. We become a part of it, sometimes directly, sometimes just by not even speaking of when we have the power to speak. And sometimes because we're afraid of paying the price. If you want to be a sign and a wonder, you must be willing to separate yourself. And so Daniel and his friends decided that it was worth it for them to pay the price, to forsake the luxuries of the king's table. They will abuse you. Uh, are you the only one? You walk from morning to night. Your mates are making money. Even your wife that sleeps in the same house with you will abuse you. Your mates are making money. You are doing Mr. Righteous. You are doing Mrs. Righteous. You cannot think of what to do. Why do you think you got into that place? There are opportunities there. What kind? The ones that take you away from the presence of God and you want to be a sign and a wonder, how? You will have money for a season. You will have pleasures for a season. But those same pleasures, because they're for a season, they will bury you at the end of the season. And the ground upon which you walk will not even remember you. Why? Because you moved from the place of protection into the place of exposure. Because you moved away from the covering of the Lord because you removed yourself from being qualified for signs and wonders to be your everyday nature. Daniel and his friends decided we will only eat vegetable and water. Permanent fasting. White fasting, if that's what it's called. But we see this meat, this chicken, this everything, all the delicacies in the world. We cannot take it. Because according to the laws of our faith, this does not work. And I know how many times we're confronted with that. And we find it difficult because the environment says to us, it's okay, it's Nigeria, it's acceptable. Except that you don't come from Nigeria. For traveling purposes, you have a Nigerian passport. For heaven purposes, you have a divine passport. And there are two different kingdoms. And you have to choose which kingdom is more important for you. Daniel made a choice. A choice to be a celebrated citizen of Judah 
defiling his body against the laws of his God or not and he and his friends decided the not is their option then who is your source <laughs> especially when you read to these four young men God gave knowledge let me read from 15 at the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away their choice food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. Who cares? Temporary loss for eternal gain. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. At the end of the time set by the king to bring them into his service, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The, the king talked with them and he found none equal to Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they entered the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. You want to be a sign and a wonder? You want to be separated from the crowd? You want to stand out? When you want to stand out of the crowd, you must be able to do what the crowd cannot do. Because as long as you're sitting in the midst of the crowd, you're lost. This is a section. Who knows who is sitting where? If you're at the back, tell me who you know that is sitting where. Ma'am, please, can you stand up? Thank you. Can you turn and face the church? Now, can you see one person standing? Yes or no? I'm not TV, you know, I saw a mic basis, television. Me, I saw a mic basis. So please answer me when we are talking. Thank you very much. Can you see her now? Why? What does standing represent here? Having the audacity to stand alone, to do what you know to be right, no matter what the crowd is doing. It doesn't matter what 10 million people do. What matters? What do you do? Why do you do it? What is right for you to do? Because the Bible says that the eyes of the Lord does not see evil. The power of God's wonder and making you a sign is about if you are aligned with him. I listened as Pastor Jim gave the prophecy in the morning and talked about the, the what do they call it again? Yes, the cubics. Yes, I know that thing, Sha. You know, he too was doing his hand like this every minute. But you know, I know that thing that you turn and turn and you're trying to match all the colors. You know, you have all the colors. Every time you hold one, you have all the colors on it. But the only time you win with it is if you have the ability to align the colors for all one face to be all the same colors. Thank you, ma'am. Even if you have one missing, you're not complete. Are you aligned with God? Because if you want to be God's sign and God's wonder, you have to align with Him. You have to ask for your own call, for where the Lord has called you to. Where is your misalignment? What are you missing? What are you doing that is keeping the hand of God locked? Why? Because the Bible says His thoughts towards us, their thoughts of good and not of evil to bring us to an expected end. God is searching for every opportunity to bless you and I. He's searching for every opportunity to show you off, show me off as his wonders. He's looking for ways to reveal the signs of who he is so that every day, like Nebuchadnezzar, had to declare who God is. You will declare, and everybody around you would have no choice but to declare that, ah, the God of this girl, I love the day I saw one post on my Instagram page after some people got what they deserve. Someone said, ah, it's the God of Ibuku Awashika that I will serve. You have to serve my God. By the time God is done with you, nobody around you should want to serve anybody's God but yours. And that's what happened to Daniel. So who is your source? You must understand who your source is. Because if you understand who your source is, you will not deviate from his directions and his guidance. The Bible says his ways are not ours. 
As the heavens are far from the earth, so are his ways far from mine. You and I can't see much. We can see so little. And therefore, we don't have a choice. But to trust the source, to understand that he's the all-knowing, he's the all-creator of all things. He has the ability to make everything work together for my good, even when I do not understand it. And that sometimes even when I can't see it, all I need to do is what is right to do according to his instruction. All I need to do is what he has said. And when it is not about prophecy or a word, because you know the Bible says prophecies can fail. So you cannot become dependent on just a prophecy or somebody, you're waiting for somebody to give you a word. This is the word. It's available to you every day. When you read it and you understand it and you allow the Holy Spirit to do his full work in you, you will always know. As the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You want to be a sign and a wonder? Your big ambition for 2024 is to become a totally God-led person. We're all seeking that perfection every day. Sometimes we miss it because we mishear or we hear our own desires. And we say, hey, it's God. And then when he fails, we realize, no, we were on our own. We were speaking to ourselves. But our greatest desire should be that we will hear God at every stage. In whom do you trust for the impossible? Let's read Daniel 2, 14 to 19. Now, here in Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And this dream, he had, I have had a dream, if you read from verse 3, he said to them, I've had a dream that troubles me, and I want to know what it means. And then he asked all his astrologers, may the king live forever. Tell us, your, um, your servants, the dream, and we will interpret it. The king replied to the astrologers, this is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me what my dream was and interpret it, I will have you cut into pieces and your houses turned into piles of rubble. But if you tell me the dream and explain it, you will receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. So tell me the dream and interpret it for me. Ah, uh -uh. voila, my deal. Who is going to tell somebody the dream that nobody has told them? What Were they sleeping with him when he was sleeping? Were they inside his head that they will know his dream? So, mere men, or astrologers, or babalawos, or onishegus, or whatever, by whatever name they are called, with everything that they claim to have, they couldn't do the impossible. Because here, there was an impossible situation. Unfortunately, this impossible situation was going to ensnare them, but in ensnaring them, it was going to ensnare the children of God with them. There are many times you are not a part to something, but the situation is about to catch you in. Why? Because the enemy is setting you up. Unfortunately for the enemy, the God that you serve is the God of signs and wonders. Which means the devil set up for your destruction becomes God set up for your promotion. Same situation. The devil serves God without consenting to it. At the end of the day, he serves the purpose of God in your life. Because this situation now is about to ensnare all of these people including Daniel and his friends. And the astrologers answered him back and said what he has asked for is impossible. It cannot happen. Anyway, let's go down to 14. When Ariok, the commander of the king's guard, had gone out to put to death the wise men of Babylon, Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and tact. Now, listen to me. Many of us, because we're Christians, we don't think we need to operate in wisdom and tact. We're tactless in how we deal with people, in our offices, in our environment, in our homes, with our in-laws. It's not that just that you carry God on the inside of you. It's that you have a God of wisdom and understanding. And that you might be on the side of truth, but there's a way, there's a context to applying your truth. There's a way that you present the information to achieve your goal. So you must daily seek wisdom. Seek understanding and ask the Lord to lead you as to how every situation that looks simple might be more complicated than you know. And therefore, don't think I don't need God. No. Make every situation before you 
a God help situation. Tell me how. Because God is the one that knows the how of every situation that you're in. So Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and tact. He asked the king's officer, why did the king issue such a harsh decree? After he explained to him, verse 17, then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends, Ananiah, Mishael, and Lazariah. He urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. Now the question is, what kind of company do you keep? Where are your helpers? When there's trouble, where do you run to? Do you even know what each person in your life, what they represent? Have you prevented or evaluated the people you have allowed to have the power of influence in your life? Have you considered in advance of a situation the kind of person they are, the kind of response you will receive from them when you're in trouble? Because in your moment of trouble, your emotions and the trauma will not allow you to think much. The people that you have opened yourself to will be the ones that will give you counsel and guidance. And if you're open to the wrong set of people, you will get wrong kind of counsel. You have a friend who has no respect for marriages or any home setting. When you and your husband or your wife have problems, that's the person you go and report and say, oh, what's wrong with you? I beg, tell the woman to get out of your house, Joe. What does she mean? Why did she talk to you like that? Why did she look at you like that? Or that one? Who is he? After all, aren't you the one that paid rent last month? What's nonsense? Tell him to go and die if he wants to. Or the ones that tell you, shut the door on your in-laws. When they come, give them gare and water. And you sit at the table and eat pandejam and eforiru. You're laughing. Think about it. You have need of money urgently. And the kind of friends you have permitted around your life are the ones who tell you, look, you know, that's my boyfriend. He takes care of me. He has a friend that's been eyeing you since. Friend is married, though. He's an aristo. But the only reason you are receiving that is because the person you have allowed to have the power and authority to speak in, into your life, in your situation, is a person of that character. You have not prevented. Oh, no man, nothing but love, the Bible says. So greet everybody, smile at everybody. But no who has access into your life. Because the remote control of your life is in your hands. You do not hand it over anyhow. You do not allow anybody to share the control of it. In your moments of need, what kind of counsel do you receive? It's based on what kind of tribe you have around you. So in this case, he went to his friends. And what did they do? They prayed together. Because they were of the same spirit and of the same counsel. And therefore, they have, they positioned themselves to receive the miracle of God in an impossible situation and save themselves from death. And God moved and answered and gave them. And when he did, who did they give the glory to? If you read some, uh, verse 20, and, and um, Daniel praised the God of heaven and said, Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. Read the rest of it as he goes on like that. Think about your company. Don't keep the wrong company. Who takes the glory for the wonders of your life? Read Daniel 2, 27 to 28. Daniel replied, No wise man, enchanter, magician, or diviner can explain to the king the mystery he has asked about. But there's a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. He has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in days to come. Your dream and the visions that pass through your mind as you were lying in bed. And then he went on to reveal the interpretation of the dream that nobody knew because even the king could not recount what the dream was. In verse 30 he said, As for me, this mystery has not been revealed to me, not because I have greater wisdom than anyone else alive, but so that your majesty may know the interpretation and that you may understand what went through your mind. Listen, you and I are vessels in the hands of God. The grace you have the power you have, the opportunities you have, they're not just for you to show off with. 
Therefore, the purpose of God to be fulfilled. Therefore, the benefit of humanity. Therefore, the ministration of the, of the word of God. Therefore, taking the message of God to the people in different ways. You see, we take the message of God to people in our offices by showing kindness, by being a considerate, loving boss who is fair, just, and equitable. Firm, there's nothing wrong with you being firm. Because you know, God is a God of peace, but he's also a God of war. Which means that being God-like does not mean you go and be a swag by boss at work. You know what I mean by that? It means that you do what is right by the rules and by regulations, but you're fair and you're just to all. And that the position or the gift in your life, they're not for pride. They're not to run around and carry your shoulder ten times over. Because you know what? The offices you will occupy in life is not you. The positions you will be in, the titles you will have, they're just that, titles, offices, positions. All of them you will leave behind. Do you know who you are? Your character, your integrity, your kindness, your love. Who you, who you reveal, the, the parts of you that reveal God. The acts of your life that shows people who God is. God is love, God is kind. Are you hung up on your position? Or are you a woman, you're hung up on who your husband is? That's even so foolish. Perchance there's another woman coming tomorrow. I want to, you know, one of the reasons people get hung up on some of this is because you don't understand power. Many times we think we're holding power in our hands. Many times we think we have power and therefore we want to misuse it. And we do not understand that all powers belongs to who? It belongs to God. And so when you read 36 to 46, when you understand that dream, it was God showing different parts of power. And the ultimate power is with him. He gives it to whoever he likes. Nebuchadnezzar and all the five kings that Daniel served under, none of them were his chosen people, but they were people. And because they were people, and God had an agenda and a reason, if only for the promotion of Daniel, if only for the fulfillment of his message through Daniel, because if you go through it, you realize that under every king that Daniel served, Daniel prospered. And for each king, there was something that no one could do. There were impossibilities that were set up. There were trials that were meant, in some cases, to lead to the destruction of others and Daniel and his friends. And at every stage, Daniel went back to his source because he understood his source. Always he went back to his source. And there were certain characteristics that showed through Daniel in that journey. He was consistent in his faith. There wasn't a point at which you could look at him and say he had another alternative. He did not seek another. Are you seeking a little here, a little there? Because God doesn't play that game. You want to be for signs and wonders? You want to enjoy the manifestation of the wonders and the powers of God on a day-to-day -day basis? You cannot deceive God. He cannot be deceived. You must be sold out. God or nothing. There isn't a midway with God. Someone asked me before, what's wrong with you? Why is everything black or white with you? Some things in life are great. They're not. If it's God, it's white. If it's not, it's black. God doesn't have grays. Every instruction and commandment of God in the Bible is a clear instruction. There are no maybes. Check your Bible well. So you either decide like Daniel that you're going to die at his feet. Or you shall change yourself and make it difficult to be the sign and the wonder that God is seeking for in your life. He was faithful to God every step of the way. He never sought another God. Even 
in his most trying times. If you get to Daniel 6, at the point in time where they plotted against him because of his righteousness. So you see, your righteousness does not protect you from the evils of the world. However, because of your, your righteousness, the evil of the world will not overcome you. It doesn't protect you from it. It will come after you. Why? The Bible already says in the world we will see troubles. So, that's normal. God told us in advance. He didn't lie. But every trial and every trouble will be God set up for you. And he will use them to promote you. In Daniel's case, at every point, his trials worked for his promotion. Courage to speak truth to power despite possible consequences. You know, at every point, the dreams he had to interpret were dangerous dreams to interpret to powerful people. Especially the one where Nebuchadnezzar was going to become what? An animal. For seven years, he would wander through the forest, lose his memory, lose his throne, and be off. Daniel said, I wish the interpretation were for your enemies and not for you. But, having said that, this is what the Lord said. Ask yourself, how many times do we play with the truth? How many times are we afraid to speak our truth? How many times are we afraid to even be honest about who we are? We will never be ashamed of the gospel. But it's in our everyday life. Do we hide our Bible? Or are we proud of our heritage? Do we have the wisdom to walk fully in it, confidently in it? Thank you, man. And never have to apologize. <laughs> I'm laughing because there's a story in my head and I'm wondering whether I should share it or not. <laughs> I have stories of some dangerous ones. Ah, you know, my life would have been easier if only I had enough sense not to be a child of God. <laughs> In some instances, because when you look at some of the troubles you get into, you know, as the chairman of a bank, I could just be spoiled, indulged, taken care of, overly provided for, if I was just ready to behave myself. Uh, I don't know if you will understand what it means. <laughs> if I was just ready to behave myself. But you know, this girl, Kumboro. <laughs> She will not be able to behave herself because I remember one day, one ex-powerful man, well, he's cooling down somewhere now. <laughs> one ex-powerful man asked my entire board to come for a meeting. Supposedly we were going for a meeting for the purpose of his office and our institution. And we had the meeting finish the work and then said, chairman, let me see you, okay? Follow. Make sure this person gets another term for his office. And I looked at the person and said, ah, Oga, it is our responsibility as a board to make the right considerations for the benefit of the institution and decide if the person is the right person for the next number of years of the institution. He said, what do you mean? I said, no. It's, ah, is there something you know that I don't? I said, it's not about that. It's just that we have the responsibility to have the meeting based on the charter of the institution. Consider what is right for the institution and make that decision at that point. He said, eh. I said, eh. He said, okay, okay. See, the problem is, I couldn't have given any other answer. In reality, I had two options. 
Stand on the side of what is right for the office I hold, for the institution I represent, and for the people that I lead. Or for my benefit and to please somebody else. Betray the trust of my colleagues. Because any commitment I made there, I tied their hands. I took away from them the power to make the right decision. I just couldn't do it. And therein started my battle. You must never be afraid to do what is right. When I say never, I mean never. You must always know if you're right on the side of God, you will be right at the end. The Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Every truth that is God's truth, it would speak. It might take time. It might cost you for a season and a time. But however, you will learn how to lose a battle in order to win the war. Because the ultimate is to win the war. And when you win the war, you will be smiling. And the Lord will be on your side. He kept the right company. We already talked about his friends. He was not selfish. You know, there was a place where after he finished solving the king's problem, they gave him this high office. He then went back to the king and said, Oga, not just me. Can you make my friends the heads of these other regions? Why? So that we can all reign together. Are you selfish or selfless? Do you think about others? Or is all about you? Because in your journey of signs and wonders, you will need helpers. Are you sowing the seed to have people ready to die in order to help you? Why? Because you have sown seeds in their lives. Do you have seeds in the soil that will germinate when you're in trouble? Or you have eaten all the seed by yourself and when trouble comes, you are standing alone. Think about it. Think about it. You're only as rich as your network and the quality of the network. So you can have... Let's not go there. His integrity through the his service of five kings was unquestionable. If you go through, you know, I... I didn't want to read anymore because we will need too much time in order to do that. But Daniel, the Bible declares explicitly that Daniel is a man of character and of integrity. And you cannot question it. Seven, he walked with wisdom and humility in dealing with all the kings. With every king that he dealt with, he walked with wisdom and integrity. In dealing with them and he made sure that his word could stand you know when you read particularly his service under King Darius who was the one who said that they should throw him into the lion's den in reality it was a setup the king loved Daniel what do you do to endear yourself to the people that you need to serve with? Is it in your service? Is it in your character? Is it in your humility? Is it in your respect for authority? Is it in your being outstanding in your performance? What do you do? Because Daniel's story was a story of performance. He set himself up for God to do wonders in his life. See, God is not a God of what Yoruba people call Abusi. What's that? See, my grandmother raised me, so, eh? High service. Ah, okay, somebody said hypocrisy. Yes, it's hypocrisy. God is not a God of hypocrisy. He cannot be mocked. What you sow is what you reap. You are a child of God. You come to church. You pray till your mouth is blistered. You dance and you serve in church. But at work, 
You do not face the work to deliver the value for which you are paid for. You do not go the extra mile to make yourself stand out amongst your peers. You don't give God anything to work with. You take from God the power to show you up. It was easy for God to work with Daniel because he was committed to his call. He took his assignment seriously. He excelled. He stood out. It was easy to love him. And when these people thought there is no way to catch this guy, eh, that everything that you do, this guy will just go and pray. There's nothing you can do. The only way you can catch him is concerning his God. What do they say about you? How can they think they will catch you? Because I love it. If people say the only way they can catch you is God, then they're in trouble. Because they have called God into your matter. And they're telling God to stand up and fight and defend you. And in this case, even though they made the king make the law, the king was sad that Daniel was caught in it. And even though he could not reverse the law because of the way the law is made in their country then, he didn't sleep. Can you imagine? The king did not sleep. The king that sentenced him to the lion's den did not sleep because he was in the lion's den. He was trusting the God he did not know. But that he knew was Daniel's God. That he would show up and he would save Daniel. Why? Because he knew Daniel is a man that should be so. And the Bible says in verse um, in verse 19 at the first light of dawn after you know they thrown Daniel into the into the lion's den the king did not sleep and then at the let me read from 18 then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought to him and he could not sleep at the first light of dawn the king got up and hurried to the lion's den when he came near the den he called to Daniel in an anguished voice why was his voice anguished? He was sure that maybe Daniel would be dead. Because normal expectation is nobody goes into the lion's den and comes out alive. But you see, we're talking about a God of signs and of wonders. We're talking about the God of the universe. The one that created the lion and the mouth of the lion. The one who can shut the mouth of the lion forever if he wants to. The one who is the God of Daniel and had commanded the lion you cannot harm him same for you because when the Lord makes a decree that no one can touch you no matter how hard they try they cannot touch you when he came near the den at the first light of dawn the king got up and hurried to the lion's den when he came near the den he called to Daniel in an anguished voice Daniel servant of the living God what would they call you what is your name mm -mm. you can be servant of anybody Servant of the Most High God. I'm not mocking you. I want you to be sure of your identity. I want you to be confident of who you are. I want you to know it, but even more so, I want the people around you to know who you are. Because if they know who you are, then they will know what they cannot do with you. Daniel, servant of the living God, as your God, whom you serve continually, continually, been able to rescue you from the lions, how many people have an answer? Daniel answered, May the king live forever. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to leave Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in his God. Now, the enemies that set you up for destruction do not know that what they've done is to lift you up, but in lifting you up, they have set themselves up for destruction. Verse 24, at the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children. Generations of your enemy shall perish. Is they and their household, 
It's not wickedness. It's the word of God. The Bible says, I will give the life of men for you. So sometimes when we're too prim and proper, we forget, are you God? Do you want to help God? Do you want to tell God how to behave? Do you want to tell him when you should act and when you shouldn't? May your enemies die. Their wives and their children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. You know, the lion, they'd been fasting. They had been fasting because of Daniel. And now it was time to break the fast. And as the Lord delivered Daniel, he sent them, you know, Muslims call the food for breaking fast, iftar, the time of breakfast. And he sent them the iftar food, the one with which the lions will break their fast. He sent it to them. But in the form of the enemies of Daniel, who planned and plotted for that Daniel will die. I want you to rise. And I want you to lift your hands to the heavens and declare. The Bible says surely they will gather, but their gathering is not of God. That as many as are gathered against you, as they were gathered against Daniel, that for your sake, they will do what? They will fall. That's what the Bible says. As many as are gathered against you, for your sake, they will fall. The Bible says they will plan it as they did, but they will never be able to execute it. You see, the execution of it is that Daniel will die. So it seemed like they succeeded. So don't worry about temporary situations. There are transit camps in the journey of your life. There are situations you will pass through that are meant to serve your purpose. Because there are different places you must visit along the journey to pick up value that is for the place of your destination. I remember a point as we went through this FBN matter. I was in process to serve on a board in America and I got a call that I had to have this conversation with one of the largest law firms in the world to discuss this matter that had happened in Nigeria. So, not a problem. Uh, so, I connected five people and they introduced themselves. One person said, I'm the compliance guy. Everybody else is transaction. We need to have this conversation before we can sign the document for these people. We need to sign for SEC. That's New York Securities and Exchange Commission. <laughs> okay. So they started asking me questions. I answered, your truth must be your truth. Which is why you must know your life is lived on a stage. There's an audience of choice watching it. The things you do yesterday will speak today and they will speak tomorrow. Make sure you walk right. Because when you least expect it, everything you have done will have to speak. So, I answered all their questions. For about an hour, we had this meeting. Discussed everything and all of that. And at the end, I remember somewhere in between, there was only one woman amongst them, elderly. And then she asked me a question. Ibuku, I'm sorry. And you're just going to leave them? I smiled. I said to her, I'm not American. If I were in your country now, I'd be caught the next morning because the system will work. But it doesn't work like that in my life. So I have to have wisdom of how to deal with it. She, she looked at me. Anyway, when we were done, the compliance guy said to me, thank you very much. You know, I apologize. We had to take you through this, but it is required that we had done our own work before we came. They had their own information. They had done their own work. They had the answers. They just needed to talk to me to confirm. And that some of these things don't make sense. And we know they don't. And we have reached our conclusions. We will sign off and it's not a problem. Thank you very much for being who you are and for doing the things that you do the way you do it. But it's not the clap. I understand your clap and I appreciate it. But I'm 
given you a life experience, even in Nigeria, to understand that the ways of Daniel are not strange. Please, don't think, oh, he cannot work here. No, he can. He can have some moments of pain, but so what? The one that even doesn't have gain has pain. So kill him. what have we seen? And then I had another encounter. And I was supposed to chair a particular board, something international as well. And then the CEO of the organization calls me and says, oh, we had a red flag. See, when you pay boys with laptop somewhere to be blogging, to be writing all sort of rubbish for your benefit, they have global consequences. But let me tell you something, even with that, the God of Daniel is more than enough. I can tell you that. So, of course, they'll come across all of those things. And they said, we have all these red flags. So I said, okay, what do you want to know? So they asked me a lot of questions, and I answered all the questions. And the guy said, okay, the board has appointed a committee of the board to do the work and all of that, and in three months we'll come back to you. I said, not a problem, but I was angry. That day I was angry because I said, Lord, I live my life every day never to find myself in a situation like this. And when I'm angry, hell, I declared words. And then my youngest son, he was 19 then, he came to me and he said, Mommy, what is it? So I explained to him what just happened. He said, Mommy, don't worry. I said, eh, you see, if God finds nobody around you, he will use a child to speak to you. And he said, these people think they know you. But by the time they finish this process, they will really know you. And when they really know you, it would only work for your good. I said, eh, he said, yes, mommy. I hugged him and said, thank you. My son was a prophet on that day. It's true. Because at the dot of the time they have told me, the next morning after their board meeting, which was a, this was an October call, on the, their board meeting was 7th of December. On the 8th of December, the same person who called me before came back to me. Now, one thing I mustn't forget. After that incident, they told me they would do their own investigation. And I think they called someone, the first person they called was someone who knew me. So he called me and said, look, I got this call. I said, yes. This is what has happened. He said, oh, I think this is the person they will call next. And I think you know the person. Call the person. I said, never. I will never call a man when I need God to show himself. That if God is God, let him go and prove my truth. I said, I will never call anyone. I was angry in my spirit. Look, it's okay for you to be angry. But make sure that you have walked the walk that will help you to stand in your day of anger. Daniel could fight any battle. He could go into the lion's den because he knew that his hands were clean. That's why he said, I have done nothing against you, king. And my God knows me. I said, I will not. And I left it. For a while, I was still upset. After a while, I forgot about it. So by the time the guy called me three months after, I was going on with my life. And then he called and said, oh, Ibuku, we had a board meeting yesterday. And, you know, the board concluded, you should please go on. You know the funny thing? That board, it was for me to serve in a local entity that was affiliated to it. But this, all the securities had to be done globally. Seven months after, seven months after, the chairman of that board called me to say, we have two asks from you. One, we have an opening on the global board. We would like you to be part of it. And two, we have another board for this new organization that we're starting. And we'd like you to be on that board. Two asks in one day from the same organization that was asking questions about me seven months before in the world you will see trouble 
There will be many types of lion's dens. But know something. God is faithful. You will be his sign and you will be his wonder. But it will be about the choices you make every day. It will be about the things you choose to do. How you choose to walk with him. The Bible says they that know their God, they will be strong and they will do exploits. If you know your God, you will know his ways. You will follow his ways. You will follow his acts. You will follow his laws. You will not walk outside of him. As long as you're working with him, he will walk with you. When it matters most, it will show up for you. Your trials will be for your triumph. At the end of the day, everything the enemy will set up to destroy you, the Lord will use to uplift you. That will be your testimony every day of your life. And you will continue to be a wonder to many, now and forevermore, in Jesus' name. God bless you. Still doing it, still doing it.